Embrace of the Vampire was an independent film released in 1995. While not being a huge release, and even though it only took a little under two weeks to make, and only 500 grand to produce, the film allegedly made well over $10 million in video sales based on word of mouth. You see, this film is known for one thing and one thing only. It's the film in which a 23-year-old Alyssa Milano, after spending the majority of her career playing in innocent child roles, would not only go topless on screen, but also do so in scenes with lesbian undertones, which at the time was considered a must-see, as at the time, unlike now, something like that was a big deal, because you just didn't see child actresses go on to be sex symbols as adults. In 2013, the film was remade to very little fanfare. So which one utilizes female vampires better, and which movie is better overall? Let's get into it. The 1995 incarnation of the film introduces us to a girl named Charlotte, we find out through various conversations with her boyfriend, Chris, that she's a virgin who was raised by nuns. He wants to have sex with her, but she repeatedly tells him that she is not ready, even though they've been together for a year and a half at the time of the film. Little does she know that she is the target of a vampire. She apparently has the spirit of his long-lost love, and he must get her to willingly give herself to him in order to not fall victim to an eternal sleep, and only has three days to do it. One major problem with that plan is as weird and sheltered as she is, the vampire has plenty of competition for her virginity. His first attempt to get her to him is to hypnotize her on top of appearing in her dreams and make her doubt Chris's love. I guess the rule is he can't directly make her love him through hypnosis, but can manipulate her into not loving someone else. What he doesn't count on is her best friend Nicole and Nicole's naughty friend Eliza taking the opportunity and newfound willingness to go out and basically try to corrupt her by taking her to wild parties full of horny guys, all trying to get with her, even if it's by force. As the vampire finds this out, he decides to just kill Nicole to get her meddling out of the way. Next stop is a girl named Sarah, who's a photographer who decides to seduce Charlotte while taking her picture. This is probably the only scene most people who saw this film in 1995 actually watched, and it is one of the most famous scenes of all time up to that point, based on the media attention it got when the film was released. Anyway, not sure if Girl and Girl goes against the virginity thing, as nothing happens to Sarah after Charlotte runs off, overwhelmed by the situation, before they could really do anything, as she wanted to remain loyal to Chris, so I guess the vampire didn't find her to be competition. The vampire then decides to manipulate Christopher by disguising himself as a girl named Marika, this also backfires as when he shows Charlotte visions of Chris cheating on her with Marika, which he actually doesn't do, it sends her over the edge, resulting in her doing a total 180 in her personality, dressing provocatively, and pretty much hitting on anything with an eye shot of her. She's so aggressive, in fact, that she ends up going back and biting Sarah on the lip, running her off, even getting in fights with Eliza. Eliza, by the way, is someone who throughout the movie shows she does not like Charlotte, and eventually she laces her drink with ecstasy. After Charlotte finally has enough of her and fights back, the fight eventually ends with the vampire showing up after Charlotte walks away and killing Eliza, while Charlotte seems to enjoy it without even knowing it's happening. After all that, the film ends with Charlotte still only thinking of Chris after the vampire hypnotizes her into coming to him. That means she doesn't give herself to him willingly by the time the clock strikes midnight the third day, and the last you see is him apparently dying on the floor of his study. Notice I haven't mentioned anything about female vampires yet. Well, there's only one scene featuring female vampires, and that's at the beginning where we see how the film's vampire antagonist is turned. In a not-so-suitable-for-work scene, three topless vampires approach him while he's sleeping and feed on him and turn him. It's disappointing that this was the only female vampire scene, as you would think the vampire would feed on Chris while he was seducing him as Marika, which would get him out of the way, but that is probably way too logical for this film. Instead, when Chris finally pulls away, he turns back into himself as he fangs out, instead of doing it in the female form. So how does the 2013 version do it different? Well, the main thing is this version does explain things instead of them just happening. Much like the original, the film does start with female vampires being responsible for the turn of the vampire antagonist, but this time there is only one. As I mentioned, this film has the same general story, but gives explanations for the goings-on that the original ignored. 
Charlotte is still a freshman at the college and still a virgin raised in a strict religious way, but now she's on a fencing scholarship, so she has a purpose while at school other than being awkward. Also this time we see her meet Nicole as soon as she arrives as they are roommates in the dorm in this version, as opposed to Nicole just being someone who just randomly showed up when the plot needed, like in the first film. Nicole here is also a much better friend as she is the one responsible for setting Charlotte and Chris up and is also very protective of her, unlike the negative influence the character was in the original. It's assumed she doesn't make it in the film and is killed during a camping trip near the end, but her death does not actually happen on screen or is ever referenced other than the knowledge that Charlotte was the only one to survive the camping trip. Chris in this film starts as her boss at the coffee shop on campus she works at and their relationship progresses over time thanks to Nicole instead of him being the groveling limp who has apparently been begging for sex for over a year and getting ignored like he was in the original. Unfortunately for Chris, this version of the vampire is much smarter and actually does kill him to get him out of the way just as Charlotte agrees to sleep with him. The Eliza character who is Nicole's friend who thoroughly dislikes Charlotte's shy innocent demeanor is pretty much left untouched from the original. The rivalry is explained here as Eliza also being on the fencing team and being jealous of the attention Charlotte was getting from everyone. Her death in this film seemingly took the place of Nicole's death scene in the original. The biggest change here is that the vampire in the remake actually has a name and a reasoning for doing what he's doing that doesn't seem convoluted. He is Professor Cole, who was a literature professor at the school as well as the head fencing coach. His need for Charlotte stems from her being a descendant of the vampire that turned him and having her give her virginity to him would turn him back to human. Charlotte then learns that her fencing skills stem from her being a damper whose bloodline was created to hunt vampires, so basically she's Blade. So all she needs to do to trick Cole into getting his guard down was to seduce him, which left him open to being stabbed through the heart, but not before he bites her. Finally, the most interesting change in this film comes in the form of the iconic lesbian scene between Charlotte and Sarah. Sarah here is another member of the fencing team who is especially nice to Charlotte, but only because she's attracted to her. This film confirms my assumption regarding the first film that girl and girl does not equate to losing her virginity, as in this version they actually do go through with it. Where it gets interesting is Charlotte has a lot of hallucinations in this version, which she takes medication for, but one of those hallucinations was during this scene where we see Sarah fang out while feeding on her from down below. So which one do you prefer? The original, which if I'm going to be honest, clearly just felt like a reason to have Milano go topless in what felt like every other scene, or the remake that pretty much does the same but at least has a plot that can be followed in between random nude scenes. Let me know your opinion in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you like this content, please leave a like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to know every time I update. If you want to help my channel grow, please check out my Patreon where you can get access to content early as well as see the content that can't be uploaded here on YouTube. Link will be in the description. Until next time.